Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Reach out to me directly, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing a watch that was made back in 1991. This is a high numerical X series Rolex Oyster Perpetual Cosmograph Daytona reference 16518 in yellow gold. So late X series, this watch from the early 90s represents an outstandingly preserved cosmograph and we'll go through all of the fit, feel, dimensions, and tech specs. Let's start with how it fits because fit comes first. It's 40 millimeters in diameter, it's 12.2 millimeters thick, it's 47.7 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip with a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Now this is a Zenith era cosmograph, so inside the legendary El Primero. But outside, the Daytona has changed precious little since its 1988 redesign. Among all of the core Rolex sports watches, with the possible exception of the Explorer, the Daytona has had the most stylistic longevity, making it difficult to distinguish a watch built in the early 90s from one made today. And you could see why that is. On my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, the watch is flat enough to slide underneath the cuff and a leather-clad yellow gold Rolex certainly works as a dress watch, but it's also 100 meters water resistant, robust, and suitable for use, at least in its day, as a sports watch. This is a vintage watch today, so I wouldn't be pushing it to the limits, but you can enjoy it on a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference, so that vintage Daytona experience is going to be broadly available to people with large variations in wrist size. Taking a quick look at the strap, you can see Rolex uses conforming plugs. You can see how there's sort of a pseudo end length between the lugs to better conform the strap to the case to avoid an ungainly gap. That little insert is used on factory fitted strap Daytonas. The strap is alligator leather. You can see medium scale black matte finish. There's a little bit of bolstering or stuffing to give it volume. Monotone stitch, folded edge, calfskin on the bottom. This is a Rolex factory strap. We have a clasp of matching vintage yellow gold. You can see several pairs of divots have been drilled into it. So even within any given strap size, you have a couple of different anchoring points inside the clasp for moving the spring bar and adjusting the fit. It is a single fold clasp. It has a friction fit and then a clamshell locked closure. You can see externally a combination of polish and satin for a little bit of contrast. Then the case smooth, sinuous, sexy, tapered lugs, compound curves and profile, everything with the exception of the flanks of the inserts polished. We have a trip lock crown in gold, we know that because it has three dots with the largest dot being in the center. Rolex crowns will always tell you the material and the type. In its day it was 100 meters water resistant with screw down chronograph pushers and screw down crown. It can still be made 100 meters water resistant but I always recommend when a watch is over 30 years old that you not horse around at the extreme limit of its performance envelope. The timepiece, though, does wear modern, and you can see the bezel's well-preserved with the lacquer inside all of the calibrations still quite evident and dark. The crystal is perfectly preserved. You can see cambered, a box section Rolex sapphire, and I know this is going to be very important to you because it's important to me. This is a tritium signed dial, and I want to know that it's both hands and numerals, and you can see when I turn the lights out, it is dead as a doornail. This is an original tritium dial with matched hands. You can see that it has a lovely sort of matte black base quality to it. it. It's gloss, make no mistake, but there's a little bit of fading of the gloss over time that creates a matte effect from some angles on these vintage cosmographs. We have a tone-on-tone -tone with gold sub-registers. We have gold applique indices, gold hands, gold Rolex crown. The point of using all that solid gold on the dial is over time it will not oxidize, tarnish, or change color. Gilt printing, so gold on black with that red Daytona script hugging the contours of the chronograph hours. Now this is a Zenith L Primera Arrow based Rolex caliber 4030. There's nothing to see from the reverse side, although you can see that its pre-1995 hallmarks are still deep and distinct. I'll show you that. You can see the watch has been well cared for.
Now, the movement was based on the Zenith L Primero, but Rolex made a lot of changes. The old winding system went away. There were a lot of little fiddly springs in it. It was maintenance intensive and it was delicate. Rolex replaced that with its perpetual winding system and Teflon coated reversing wheels. The next thing Rolex did was they detuned the beat rate of the L Primero from 5 hertz to 4 hertz. It was supposed to improve durability, but given that there have been no durability problems with the El Primero, it was probably overkill. Rolex also replaced the flat hairspring with a hand-curved overcoil. Chronometer certified the movement. The base El Primero was not a certified chronometer. Rolex replaced the standard mobile regulator with a free-sprung system and a micro Stella nut balance, so using their own oscillator and their own adjustment system to make it tougher and more precise. They retained the underlying 31-joule architecture as well as the 50-hour automatically wound power reserve and the column wheel lateral clutch architecture. So the column wheel on an El Primero is world class. You feel it and you hear it and it's a pleasure. Though these watches featured lateral clutches, so there's a little bit of a jump to the seconds hand when you start them up. While the later Rolex 4130 movement would have hacking seconds, this one does not, but in practice, if you wish, you can always just reset the chronograph seconds hand, though I don't recommend running a chronograph on a lateral clutch for more hours than the largest register on the dial, so keep your center seconds operation to 12 hours at a pop and you should be just fine. This watch is beautifully preserved. Everything from the metal, which remains full and even from end to end and corner to corner, to the lacquer inside the bezel, to the condition of the dial and the presence of all original factory tritium, this is one to own and collect. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.